Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Hey there, and welcome back to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I am your host, Sam Kabert, and this is episode number three of a special six-part series that highlights my book, Overcome the Overwhelm, with the six-step breath process. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't listened to the first two episodes, please just go back to episode one and listen to episode one, then episode two, because it's going to make a lot more sense if you listen to this in order, because it is a sequential pod series. With that being said, I want to welcome you guys to step number three. This is a pre-recorded series that I did with Promo Corner, their marketing agency. And I asked my friend Alicia Kate to join me as a co-host because she has a background as a trauma therapist and her and I both are breathwork facilitators. And I thought it would be fun to unpack the steps in a different way that I unpacked them previously using working with someone that I trust and respect to get her clinical background uh, advice and take on the steps. So I hope you guys enjoy step number three with Alicia K. Before we get started, I just want to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed to the show and you enjoy the show, please consider subscribing. And if you're getting value of the show and you have not left a rating and review, please consider leaving a five star or however many stars you think the show deserves review so that the show can grow. You know, I do this out of the goodness of my heart. Honestly, this is a being of service. I've been doing this podcast for five years now, which still blows my mind. And I'm so grateful for all the reviews we have. And the more reviews the show gets, the more it grows. It's as simple as that. And the mission of the show is to raise the collective consciousness of humanity from this fallen state. So if you're down with that mission and you want to help raise the collective consciousness, The easiest way to give back to the show, completely free. Just leave a five-star review. Even better if you leave a review with that rating. So thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoy this episode with Alicia Kay covering the third step of the six-step breath process for inner peace. Welcome back to the third episode of Overcoming Overwhelm, sponsored by Promo Corner. My name is Sam Kaber, and with me is Alicia Kay. Alicia is a good friend of mine. She is not in the promotional products industry. She's a good friend that I've met through doing all this inner work, that becoming a mental health advocate in, in regard to becoming a somatic breathwork practitioner. If you have not listened to the earlier episodes, please go back to episode one because that's going to make so much more sense because each of these episodes build off of each other. I asked Alicia to come in because she's a licensed and certified trauma therapist. And I've worked with Alicia a bunch. She's been on my podcast a few times. I've been on hers, I think. And she's got an awesome podcast too, you can check out. And like I said, we're both uh, mental health advocates and all about breath work. This series complements my brand new book, my sixth book, which is still wild to even think or say, but my new book called Overcome the Overwhelm. You can find out more about it at my website, samkabert.com. It's now available. 
And in it, I'm sharing this brand new framework that I've been using with my clients for the past couple of years, but now it has a name, right? Now it's just packaged and framed and it's in a book. And it's that name is the six step breath process. In episode one, we went over that, hey, we have so many different emotions. And if we don't allow ourselves to feel those emotions, then they get stuck and stored in the body. So notice when you have an emotion and what's step one in the breath acronym, the B stands for breathe to slow down. Step two, the R is relax to feel. And the homework assignment, if you will, in the last episode was to practice the cyclic sigh, which is inhaling all the way up through the nose, through the nose, sipping in a bit more at the top, then through the mouth, exhaling and doing that repeatedly for a couple of minutes. Now, if you do it for five minutes a day, for five days, you'll notice some profound shifts. I promise you, it's science backed. You can go to Dr. Andrew Huberman's podcast and listen to a three hour episode all about it if you want. Or you can check out my YouTube channel, Spirituality Simplified, for a guided version of that. With that, in this episode, we're getting into the third step, which is energy to reveal. Now, the first thing to really understand here is something that we said earlier on. Emotions are energy in motion. Like we really think about that. The first time I heard this, it was like a light bulb went off because we just use words that we've always heard, but we never really think about them. But emotion, energy in motion, stacking that with the knowledge that our body processes emotions in 90 seconds. Literally, we have a 90 second physiological response when we experience an emotion. And now we understand that emotions are energy in motion. Well, let's put this together. If Alicia is going to chocolate or if I'm going to pistachios or if you're going to ice cream or anything else, Netflix and chilling, whatever the thing is to avoid it, that emotion, which is energy in motion, now gets stuck in the body. It's not just saying like, oh, breath work helps to remove stuck energy. Like, oh, okay, right? No, it's science back because we literally have a 90 second physiological response. And if we uh, dissociate and numb and distract ourselves from feeling that, that energy gets stored, which is why after the first step, when we notice that something's changing with us, we're feeling something, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's stress, maybe it's grief, whatever it is, breathe to slow down, then relax to feel. In that relaxation, you can start to do the cyclic sigh that'll help you to slow down, to allow yourself to feel what's coming to the surface. And in the third step, energy to reveal. Now is the point where we're starting to get curious and it starts to become a game a little bit. Okay, so there's this energy moving through me. There's this emotion, like, what is this? And this is where the lesson comes through. And with that, I'm going to toss it over to Alicia. Talk to us, tell us a little bit about what's coming up for you. Yeah, what most people don't understand, which I often talk about with my uh, counseling and coaching clients is that what you're experiencing in the body usually doesn't have to do with what's going on in the present moment. We have so much stored in us neurologically from the programs that, or I don't want to say programs, but the things that we have been through in the past that then creates a habit of the way that we respond because of the unprocessed, undigested, unemotional stuff that's been packed into our nervous system really since the day that we're born, that when we are in present day, we are handling the situation in a survival mode or in a stressed out mode that isn't our natural state, right? Our natural state is calm. It is clear. It is collected. We become response able when we clear out the emotions and the dense energy from our body, right? So when you actually allow yourself to be curious, I always say be curious before furious, right? Like let's right. be curious about what's coming up in the body and let's get to a place of non-judgment so we can explore what the sensations are. What am I feeling? What is this related to? What is this attached to? right? Was my reaction congruent to the problem or the situation at hand? Or was I responding to it in a way that I used to respond when I was younger? Because that's what the body knows, right? We're all running on these habitual responses because we haven't taken the time to be curious about what those responses are and where they're coming 
from. So I love the idea of what you're teaching in the book around like, slow down, be curious, relax into it, and come at a place of, I like to add non-judgment to say, um, how do I want to handle this emotion? Do I want to be in an overwhelmed, stressed out survival state? Or do I actually want to feel more like my true self, which is calm, collected, and response able? So what you're teaching actually allows people to get into that other side, which is our natural ability. Absolutely. And thank you for that. There's uh, some awesome wisdom and nuggets in there. I, I love that. Thank you for sharing, Alicia. And one thing that's coming up for me, just hearing you talk about it, and just this, in the spirit of being curious or without judgment, right, is triggers. Because what's, what's happening, what this is all about is at the very beginning of these steps, like we're getting triggered, we're feeling something, right? And what trigger is, is you're associating that with a past experience. So a couple episodes ago, I shared a story about like a rush project with a client, right? Something within our industry. And what happened for me when I was building my business uh, prior to being named a rising star in 2020 was when I would get all of these rush orders or whatever the case may be, the reason why I was getting so stressed as soon as it came across my email was because I was, it was a trigger where it was, I was associating it with other past experiences. So in doing these three steps and the third step, like using this example, being like, okay, why am I so stressed? Why is my nervous system all of a sudden fight or flight? Oh, because I've never actually handled this and approached it in a different way. I've always been a hamster on a wheel. Whereas now that I took the time to slow down, I can see that, oh, wow, every single time a client reaches out with the rush project, I lose my cool. Right. So now that I know that about myself, I have this new information. Now we can invoke change. That's the important. That's one of the reasons and just a top of mind uh, app, applicable scenario that relates to our industry of how you can actually be with these energies coming to the surface. Now, uh, yeah, you have oh, anything? Say one, one thing is what we should what what's really important for the listeners to know is that your brain will make up a sentence in five seconds to describe what's going on in your body. So we call those automatic negative thoughts. Those automatic negative thoughts are always attached to something from the past. Like, so for me, it's, I don't have enough time, right? Like that's my automatic, like, you know, I don't, I don't have enough time for this. And the minute that I hear my brain feeding me that sentence, I'm like, no, breathe. You do have enough time you're actually running on an old program that is no longer true and no longer resonates with you. So the way that you know that you're not embodied and that you're not in a calm state is the thoughts that you are thinking that are always attached to old unprocessed way of being and living and existing. Preach. Yeah, no, totally. And that and that's perfectly going to dovetail into the next episode, step four. Before we go there and before we let you guys uh, go, this is school. This is time for education and classwork. So uh, get that, get out your pen. If you're on a jog or you're, uh, you're driving your car or whatever, like make a mental note and come back to this later because there is some homework. And definitely do not do this with us if you are running or uh, sh uh, driving a car or anything like that. If you are in a cool, calm, collected state and you're kind of grounded, meaning that you're, you have a safe place, like a environment where you won't be disturbed. I'd love to walk you guys through a little, a little mini experience of what Alicia and I offer in terms of these breath work journeys. In episode one, we talked about what a breath work journey is, and that can be anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes long or even longer than that, but it's an idea to get your body into fight or flight to mimic a trauma response to remove that stored energy in the body. I like to say, think about those videos that you, we've all seen where a lion is chasing a gazelle. If the gazelle is lucky enough to get away, what does it do? It shakes and it convulses because it's allowing itself to remove that trauma it just experienced. Whereas we hold on, to those traumas, which is why we are mimicking this trauma response to remove the energy, right? So in this 
little exercise. It's like the smallest, like 2% version of what we would do in like a 30, 45, or even 60 minute long, what's called breath work journey. And this is to activate fight or flight. Yes, everything Alicia and I have been saying is about shifting into rest and digest. And the reason why I'm going to teach you guys this tool right now is because sometimes what we've done so far isn't enough, right? Like sometimes it's, it's almost like meditation. If you're a new meditator or if you've never meditated before, whatever the case may be, you might just be sitting there and be like, man, I have so many thoughts. This is so uncomfortable. Oh, I have to, I have an itch. I got to scratch that itch. And it's just like going and going and going and going. And we never really get there. Well, utilizing this tool that I'm about to teach you is just such a good way to soften all those voices and all of the distractions to allow yourself to feel. Because when you allow yourself to feel and land in your body, that's when you can get to this next step of step three of getting curious. What are these energies revealing to me? Because if you're still kind of like at that stage where, okay, I'm breathing to slow down. I'm doing this cyclic sigh thing. I don't really understand what's going on here. And there's supposed to be something revealing to me, but all I can think about is like what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Then we're, we're not getting there, right? So we need to get an extra little boost there. And how we're going to do that is mimicking a trauma response. No, I'm not going to say trauma response. I'm going to say we're mimicking a stress response. All right. That's so much better said. So go ahead and find a comfortable say, seat if you feel safe to do so. And we're just going to do it for a little bit here. You can close down your eyes and then through the mouth, go ahead and inhale and let the belly expand. Then exhale, bring the belly to the spine and then go again. And what we're doing here is called a circular breath. So we're not going to stop between the inhales and exhales. What it should sound like is. And basically we're just inhaling and exhaling through the mouth. You can have your lips kind of like you're blowing out candles on a birthday cake. Imagine that birthday cake is about three feet in front of you. And on your inhales, you're letting the belly expand. And on the exhales, you're bringing the belly to the spine. I know it's a lot, so just stick with me. Let's go ahead and close back your eyes if they were open for any reason. Closing down the eyes, feeling your feet on the floor, feeling your palms on your lap. Noticing all the sounds you hear. And through the nose, inhale all the way up. Sipping a bit more at the top. Through the mouth, exhale. Through the mouth, inhale. Through the mouth, exhale. Through the mouth, inhale. Exhale, and we'll keep going just like that. Follow my rhythm here. And inhale all the way up, sip in a bit more air, sip in a bit more, swallow, roll back the eyes, hold the breath. Exhale. Just one more round. Here we go. Then inhale all the way up, sip in a bit more at the top, sip in a bit more, swallow, hold the breath, roll back the eyes, continuing to hold the breath, feeling what you feel. Through the mouth, exhale. Through the nose, sipping in some air. Inhale all the way up. Sipping a bit more at the top. Hold the breath. And ask yourself, what is this energy revealing to me? Don't overthink it. Letting the first thing that comes to you land. And exhale. Letting your breath return to its natural state and rhythm. 
And when you're ready, flickering your eyes open. So for that, that was just like a little, little thing that if you want to get off coffee, try doing something like that and it actually helps. I hope that you guys had a little message come through at the end when we asked ourselves, what is the energy revealing to us? Because that was the whole purpose of why we did this. Like just if you didn't get there, know that you can go a little bit deeper because that was just like a very much little introduction. Alicia, I'd love to hear from you if you have anything to add. Yeah, this is the one go-to practice that is an automatic nervous system reset for me. If I notice that I am in a stressed out state, like I'm going, going, coming from the office and going into home before I have to be mom, I will park my car. I will do this like literally five minutes of breathing to reset. Um, I do it at home with my son. He's super equipped and understands, oh, mom needs to go de-stress. She's breathing. And it has become the one thing that I encourage all of my clients to do because it literally resets the body and gets you back in, or it resets the brain and gets you back into the body so that you can be deliberate with how you show up for your day and how you want to choose to respond. Thank you for explaining uh, some real life applications. And I just love the idea so much about teaching the kids as well, because your son's eight, 10, something like that, right? Yeah, he's 10 now. Yeah. And yeah. He, he gets it and he does. And he'll be like, oh, just I need space. I need to breathe. And I'm like, yes, you nailed him. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing that. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this practice uh, and you want more, reach out to me or go to my YouTube show called Spirituality Simplified. When you go to my YouTube channel, there's a playlist there that says breath work. There's a bunch of different types of pre-recorded meditations, visualizations, and breath work exercises so that you can do it at your leisure in your own time. Um, and if you want to check out the book, it's called Overcome the Overwhelm is now available. You can find all the information about my book at samkabert.com. That's my website. And if you would like to connect with Alicia, her website is aliciakcoaching.com. That's K-K-A-Y, aliciakcoaching.com. Now stay tuned because we're only halfway there. This is like, we're almost at like a peak right now. We kind of are at peak. I'm so excited to get into the next episode with you guys because we're going to be talking about this uh, practice that I've used so much and that Alicia is certified in teaching. And you're going to hear more about that in the next episode. Thank you so much, Promo Core, for hosting the Overcoming Overwhelm. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode to the very end. I want to give a shout out to Alicia K. Thank you so much for being such a great and wonderful co-host. And it was so much fun to unpack all of this with you. Shout out to Lori Moore over at Promo Corner for having the idea to host this show on Promo Corner, which is now being repurposed on the Soul Seeker podcast. And for those of you that are new to the Soul Seeker podcast or you haven't left a rating, review, or subscribe to the show, I just invite you to consider leaving a review, rating, and or subscribing to the show, even sharing it with a friend. Whatever you're down with, hey, I'm grateful for that. All I really want, the reason why I'm doing this show, is to play my part in raising the collective consciousness, raising the collective consciousness from this fallen state because it can be very depressing when we take a look around the world and see this fallen state that we're in. So the more we can help each other out and lift the collective consciousness, then the more better world we're going to be living in. It's that simple. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next episode for step number four.